Welcome back to PNG Trends Burner. This video will make you realize how a small group of people are trying to take over the power sector in Papua New Guinea, a story filled with ambition, controversy, and impacts on local communities. From high-stakes power deals to the lives of ordinary people, we'll cover it all. So, sit tight and let's explore the electrifying developments in PNG involving politicians, foreigners and a massive loan deal. In recent years, Papua New Guinea has embarked on ambitious power projects aimed at improving electricity access across the nation. Key players in this saga include PNG Power, Dirio Gas and Power, MRDC, and the international company 2020 Energy. But who benefits, and at what cost is this private power business to the ordinary Papua New Guinean household? Key Developments in September 2022, PNG Power and Dirio Gas and Power signed a new power purchase agreement for a 66 MW gas-fired power station in Gila Province. This project promised clean and affordable power for Port Moresby. However, as with many grand plans, the reality is far more complex. Reflecting on the Dirio Gas-based 45 MW power plant in the Port Moresby grid, it is described as being 100% owned by Papua New Guineans, including landowners and provincial governments from Southern Highlands, Gila, Gulf, Western, and Central Provinces. Yet, the truth is that politics, politicians, and both past and present public figures are at the forefront of these deals. The investment is about 350 million kina. It is up to PNG Power to fix the transmission and retail and pass the savings to the customers. Key Partnerships and Operations In September 2024, the chairman of Dirio Gas and Power Isaac Lupri said PNG Power Limited owes Dirio more than 240 million kina. But, who pays this bill and where does the money come from? Well, we unmask this question, but first, let's uncover the key partnerships and operations of the lucrative power business. Partnerships are crucial in this business and large sums of money are at play at the expense of Papua New Guinea taxpayers, both you and business houses. PNG Power, Dirio Gas and Power, and MRDC joined forces with 2020 Energy, a company backed by Asia Pacific Energy Ventures and several British Virgin Islands entities. These include shell companies called Fuado Limited, Season Cove Limited, Snowfields Wealth Management Limited, and Tanuki Holdings Limited. Major players like Jeff Lawrence from 2020 Energy and leaders from Asia Pacific Energy Ventures are at the helm. This consortium aims to control the highlands and Romu grids, transmitting electricity from Gila to major industrial users in Lai and mines like Hidden Valley and Romu Nickel. Financial and infrastructure concerns. The PNG government, led by Prime Minister James Marapi, borrowed 1.423 billion kina from China Exim Bank to construct a high voltage transmission line from Hydes to Yonki. Despite completing the initial stages, no electricity has flowed through the line, raising serious concerns about its utility and the financial burden on the state. Existing power assets like Pawanda Hydro, Yonki, and Romuwan are facing neglect and budget cuts. Meanwhile, new hydropower projects are bypassed in favor of expensive gas-fired projects. Critics argue that this is a missed opportunity for cheaper, cleaner energy solutions. James Marapia's administration has been under fire for leading the country astray with these projects. Financial strain on PNG power and prioritization of costly gas-fired projects are among the major criticisms. Allegations of corruption and mismanagement abound, with some suggesting deals benefit a few at the expense of the country's resources. Gila Governor Hundialu's response Governor Philip Hundialu of Gila Province has defended these projects, shifting the blame to former Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. According to Hundialu, the initial gas price negotiations failed under O'Neill, resulting in higher costs. Hundialu also highlights that the PPA rate for Dirio is among the lowest, blaming external factors like gas prices and unpaid invoices for the high cost of power. Good day, Hela. Plenty time, Mr. Tok. No card na talk against him. Any company where Governor Philip Hundialu form him or register him for and on behalf of people of Hela and Papa Crown. And the Mr. Tok, I don't trust Mr. Tok, come, 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 and part of which. Now you look at the release of Peter O'Neill regarding zero power. You may get tell him that part of the shareholders are hidden in Virgin Islands. 
Me be lose trust lo governor Philip on the other time. I'm no member yet. Back then, uh, late member lo Koroba late copy ko. Late Honorable John Kekono and the Philip Ndalu and them all forming one power company. High John Venture Limited. All forming this company now all come ask him all man Mary lo buy him shares. Impacts on local communities. Let's talk about the ground reality. Clearance work for the power line has begun in Jawaka, Simbu, and Eastern Highlands provinces. This has led to the displacement of people from their villages, affecting their ability to build houses and make gardens. Subsistence living, fundamental to these communities, is threatened, raising moral and ethical concerns. The Chinese Connection In the mix are Power Construction Corporation of China, Power China, and Shenzhen Energy Group, partners in the Romu 2 hydropower project. These companies are playing significant roles in developing PNG's energy infrastructure, contributing to the country's efforts to improve electricity access and reliability. Peter O'Neill is critical of James Marapia's loan amounting to 1.423 billion Kina from China Exim Bank to construct a 132 kV high-voltage transmission line from Hydes to Yonki built by Chinese firm TBEA. O'Neill highlighted that the first two stages from Hydes in Gila province to Keltiga in Western Highlands province were completed over two years ago and to date not one single unit of electricity has passed over the transmission line. No families or businesses are better off but the state is in 1.4 billion Kina debt and paying off the loan with foreign currency we do not have. So, who really benefits from these power construction projects? While local communities and industrial users need improved electricity access, the financial benefits largely flow to private shell companies like 2020 Energy and Asia Pacific Energy Ventures. The provincial governments and customary landowners also have a stake, but the focus remains on ensuring that the projects are implemented transparently and ethically. Who are the losers? The real losers here? The PNG taxpayers. This project is bankrolled by international loans and government schemes, managed by middlemen, and owned by a select few. But the ones who will bear the brunt of the high costs? Future generations of Papua New Guineans. In other words, you and your children will be footing the bill for years to come. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, comment and hit the round button in the middle to subscribe and join the PNG YouTube community now. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay informed and stay engaged. As the countdown begins to our nation's day, but frustration lingers in the dark we stay. Power outages, a constant fight. Challenging our days and giving our lives.